Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead Motoring and you join me here inside the rather wonderful Lexus LC500 convertible. Uh, we reviewed the LC500 Coupe a year ago, was a big fan of that, particularly the naturally aspirated 5 litre V8 which is of course fitted to this model as well. Um, so yeah, thought a year on, why not find out what it's like in convertible guys. Um, we're going to have a look around the exterior, come back inside, have a look at the interior and the functionality and then of course take it out for a drive as well. We'll just start with some facts and figures up top of course that five litre v8 is the centerpiece of this car it's an engine that i'm a big fan of and it translates very well to this car as well unsurprisingly um model tested comes in at 108,000 pounds uh, that features the upgraded mark levinson audio and the color um, head up display and um, those are the only real optional extras to consider on this car everything else you will see comes as standard um 0 to 60 is ticked off in five seconds so outright savage pace is not the aim of the game with this car it's very much focused on being a refined gt cruiser with plenty of power to keep your journey progressing which it does rather well but anyway let's start this review by having a look at the outside and here it is, the Lexus LC500 convertible. Now the model tested here is fitted in terrain khaki paint and features 21 inch alloy wheels. And we'll come in and have a closer look at these LED lights here. They do a fantastic job of lighting up the road at night. It's got adaptive full beam as standard and all that sort of thing. Um, the front grille there is obviously interrupted by the number plate in the UK, obviously in other markets, that's not so much of an issue. Um, I know the massive front grilles aren't to everyone's taste, but Lexus did sort of lead the way with that, didn't they? Um, bringing in big front grilles, particularly on their SUV and coupe models. Um, we'll come in and have a closer look at these wheels. I think they really suit the profile of this car. I do quite like them. Um, yeah, very good looking. I mean, it's just good looking all around this car. I mean, perhaps good looking, I mean, it's obviously subjective, but it's striking looking. You remember seeing these and you don't see that many of them on the road. Uh, we've got the roof up at the moment. Um, in fact, that's probably a good time. Let's see what it's like with the roof down. And here it is with the roof open. That process takes about 20 seconds. Um, filming by myself today, so I'm unable to show you what that's like in action. Um, again, I think it's really good looking, really lends itself well to being convertible, I think the shape of this car. Uh, we'll come back in and have a look at the functionality in a minute, but I thought we'd just over, have an overview of the sort of passenger space in here. Obviously plenty of room up front. Um, rear space, yeah, is a little bit cramped. Um, this does have uh, the comfort entry and exit thing, so the, the seat moves forwards and backwards as you get in and out, as does the steering wheel comes in towards you just to make it easier to get in and out. Um, it does have ice fix in the back here, so you can obviously move the seat forward and you can get kids in if you need to do like a shorter journey, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, yeah, it's not really uh, an everyday family car, but I guess you already knew that. Um, we'll come around and have a look at the back. Um, I think it's a good looking car from every angle this. I do like the, the lines on these lights back here. I think I think they look really good. I think it's a really smart looking car this. And you've got the exhausts down here. Um, as we'll get to on the drive along, they do sound really good. Um, while we're here, we'll just have a look at boot space. So it's only a 149 litre boot, this, so uh, pretty small. I guess that's another compromise of having the convertible. Um, but as we've just seen, those rear seats aren't the biggest, so you're probably not going to have passengers in here too often. So you could use that for auxiliary storage if you're going for weekends away and that sort of thing. Um, we'll just come around this side as well to complete the view of it. Um, I mean, even the tan interior has grown on me here. I wasn't, wasn't sure about it at first because it is a bit overkill. I mean, it's just incredibly tan. The coupe we reviewed last year had, um, it was red and black, so red leather seats with a black, black interior down the middle. And here, that looked really smart. But um, I think this does really complement the terrain khaki green paintwork rather well. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's definitely a striking looking car. Yeah, like, like I said, you, re you remember seeing one of these on the road, if only because you don't see that many of them, unfortunately. But um, I say unfortunately, because I think it's an absolutely fabulous car and I can't quite understand why more people haven't bought them. But anyway, on that, let's see what it's like inside. So this is the view from the driver's seat of the Lexus LC500 convertible. Um, it's a really nice driver focused cab in this thing. Everything's within nice easy reach of where, where you need it to be. Plenty of functionality on the steering wheel as well. You've got your lane keep assist, cruise control over here, radio modes, volume, all that sort of thing up here too. Um, now we'll just start her up, foot on the brake. Get that lovely v8 burble straight away and as i mentioned the um steering wheel comes out towards you and i'll just um it's all electrically adjustable down here so you can move it up and down backwards and forwards up there which is really useful um get a nice view of the 
information speed you're doing and all that sort of thing up here. I don't know if that'll come to you, you can just about see it flickering in there, the head up display. Um, obviously that's just because it doesn't agree with the frequency of the camera here, but that is really nice, it just sort of floats on the road in front of you, it doesn't insist upon itself too much. Um, another cool feature, if I, if I press this button down here, do you see that screen move to the side and then you get more information on your lane keep assist and all that sort of stuff down there? Press that again and that disappears. Um, yeah, really easy to use. Everything is just where you want it to be in this car. And a, as I mentioned, there's a generous level of standard equipment, which you could argue there should be at north of £100,000. But what you get is you get all the driver aids, so your adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist down here and all that sort of thing. Um, reversing cameras, if I pop it into reverse, quickly see that pop up there and you get your parking sensors and all that business as well with it um, so that comes as standard and um, blind spot monitor so there's there's an orange light comes up on here when there's something in your blind spot uh, which is handy you get adaptive variable suspension and um, so this screen up here is 10.3 inch screen it's not touch screen so it's behind a pane of glass up there um, now the only annoyance really is you have to use this trackpad to activate everything up here so for example if I just want to dive in and sort out the climate control here it's come, you've got to move this, it's a move of your finger each time you want to do anything on here and it's just a little bit fiddly um, and you often find if you're trying to find something on the move that you're spending a lot of time with your eyes off the road which isn't ideal, um, you know something like the rotary dials or even just, just a touch screen up here would arguably be better but it's one of those things the longer you spend with it the more you get used to it. Um, not ideal it's not the best system going um but you know you do you do just get used to it um i'm coming to storage now uh, so you get the door bins down there press this button here and we've got the glove box as well um yeah, it's not not the biggest in the world um there's a cup holder in here which i've been using for the most part to keep the key in as you come across here hold this button down there's another cup holder in there and we can lift this up and there's some storage and a couple of usb ports for charging uh, one quite good thing is you press that button and that just slides back away there now to do the roof all the functionalities in here hold it up to put it up down to put it down that sort of thing and this button controls the three quarter windows at the back you've got a gear selector and all that sort of thing um, and it's also got quite nice gear shifts here as well because it's got a 10 speed box so there's quite a few to row through um, and it confuses itself on kick down sometimes so bringing the paddles into play can be a good option from time to time and you've got your drive select modes up here and for your traction control and if you're driving in snow and all that sort of thing so that's quite good i mean it seems a bit fiddly at first but actually it means you can just keep your eye on the road you flick up and you can see that change between sport and sport s and the dials change there so you know what you're on and then flick that down and then that gets you comfort and eco so that's pretty good um, as you can see there we've averaged 21.4 mpg we've done just over oh done 250 miles actually so um yeah i mean it is a big naturally aspirated v8 oh yeah one one other curiosity a dvd player um yeah, I'm not sure who watches those. I don't even have one of those in my house anymore, but um, you get one in here. But anyway, crucially for a big, comfortable GT car, what is it like to drive? So what's the Lexus LC500 convertible like to drive? Well, we'll start with that engine note. Just a really nice rasping sound you get from that naturally aspirated V8. Um, it really is a centerpiece of this car. I think it's a wonderful engine and I just think it, yeah, it's absolutely centerpiece of this car is the right way to put it. Um, it's not the only commendable part of the driving experience in this car though. Um, as I mentioned, they've not gone all out for brute acceleration, not 65 seconds. You get 450 brake horsepower, 530 newton meters of torque. So, you know, there is plenty of power, but it's not silly. It doesn't get out of hand, but it does sound oh so sweet every time you do it. And it's just that reassuring hand of having a V8 just in your back, shoving you along. Um, we've just done a run of EVs and obviously you get all of that torque, bam, on tap straight away. There's no build up, there's no theatrics to that power delivery in EVs. And I think that's what we're gonna miss really when these, these sorts of engines are gone when nothing's fitted with a naturally aspirated V8 engine anymore. You're going to miss that sense of theatre, you get that build up, everything just hunkers down and then you get that roar and it 
bursts into action and it really is it's a fantastic thing and it's also omnipresent in this car you're just constantly aware that that engine is doing something in the foreground or indeed in the background it's just always there all the time and just just a reassuring hand i think it's nice to know it's there because it's got enough power enough pleasantries to keep you entertained keep you out of trouble and just guide you home i think it's a really really wonderful engine um also lends itself to the driving experience of this car because it's you know it's a lazy v8 this is quite a lazy laid-back car i do really like the way it drives i mean that adaptive suspension does a wonderful job it's just so smooth and glides along the road really well um it's not been created with track days in mind it weighs just a smidge over two tons when you start throwing it around into corners and you're a bit late on the braking you do suddenly become aware of that weight um but yeah like i said i don't think this is a car you're going to be seeking out track day experiences in it's very much a continent cruiser it's a really really top end gt car in my opinion this you've got that lovely engine up front i mean it's just so well fitted in here as well everything is done superbly and you get a bit of storage okay you can use the second row of seats and you get the small boot in the back and you get a nice daylight today and you can take the roof off um not got it off at the moment because um my microphone's not the best so for sound quality purposes we have the roof on but it just gives you that option should you want it and it is really nice it's just a real treat to be able to drive something like this take it out across the countryside and just enjoy driving i mean and it's a car that really does make you enjoy driving and shouldn't cars do that i think they should really and this does have wanted to drive this car and if only to hear a bit of that v8 noise but there's something quite serene about the whole thing mindful it's just you just get in it and you can just drive for hour after hour after hour and never really get bored of it it's just a really nice place to be and you, yeah i think having the convertible i think i do marginally prefer it to the coupe i must say um just because they've done a really good job in here as well even with the roof down it's never too noisy and you've got heated and ventilated seats we've got the neck air scarf thing here as well that does a wonderful job as well keep keeping you warm and it's just it's quite a soothing thing to have really so you've got the roof off keeping your neck warm it's really nice and also um, I should have shown it on the um, interior functionality bit so there's a thing called Lexus climate concierge so you set the concierge on and it helps with things like purifying the air and it just sets the temperature of the steering wheel seats um, the cabin to what it is so I've got it at 20 at the moment and it will just keep everything at 20 the whole time so it will activate the heated or ventilated seats depending on what it needs all that sort of thing and it works remarkably well actually often these automated systems can be a bit hit or miss if I'm being kind but this works really well the Lexus Climate Concierge yep big big fan of that and um, final word as well if you are just cruising around you want to be able to listen to your music in high quality at least Mark Levinson's system I thought it was the balls when I had the Lexus LC500 coupe I mean it's so good in this even with the roof off and you're cruising along like down a motorway at 70 miles an hour the sound clarity is extraordinary <laughs> it's really really good um, now the system in the LC500 had been the best sound system I'd heard in any of the cars I've reviewed until we reviewed the Rolls-Royce Cullinan Black Badge. The Rolls-Royce Bespoke Audio is, yeah, it's, it's the next level. I mean, that is the best. Um, but that car cost £450,000. So, you know, uh, this about 350 grand cheaper has a sound system that's not a million miles shy of that i mean it is really good and if you're getting one of these i would strongly recommend ticking the box that gets you that mark livingston audio it's really really good um and just everything in this car is really well thought out it's so easy to use to get to grips with i mean it's just that tracer pad really down here for navigating the infotainment is the only annoyance i mean but when it comes down to the driving experience i mean like i say it's just a car that you want to drive you enjoy every sensation of driving it and i think cars should do that for you and if that's the sort of thing you do and you enjoy driving and you know you undertake long journeys and that sort of thing i mean this car's just not going to disappoint it really really does hit the mark love the engine love the way it's fitted out love the way it looks um it's great with or without the roof on i think yeah it's a really really good car just can't understand why you don't see more of them on the road i must say um i think it's more than a match for some of the competition um, if you are looking at a high-end GT convertible, then I think you'd be crazy not to at least have a look at one of these. Um, just, yeah, just really, really enjoyed having it. It's been a fantastic car. I thought it would be because I really like the coupe version. So no surprise that the convertible version as well is absolutely superb. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing. We've got loads of videos on the channel and we've got loads more coming up. So yeah, please hit the subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks.